Is it possible for a few AI agents to learn all by themselves and become the best dodgeball players in AI history? But even more importantly, can they become better than a human player at smashing virtual faces with a rubber ball? In order to find these answers, I trained the agents for more than 300 hours and made them compete against each other, and then I've challenged them myself. If you want to try and play against these beasts, make sure to watch this video till the end. There will be two competing teams, red and blue, each having three agents. The agents are free to move in any direction, such as forwards, backwards, left, right, and even horizontal <coughs> diagonally. See? I'm learning. Players can also rotate left or right, which in combination with the free movement will allow our agents to dodge enemy balls <laughs> yeah, while still being able to aim in any direction. And I know what you're thinking. If only the agents had just a tad bit more mobility, it would be perfect. It's funny you would say that imaginary voice in my head. Because I actually implemented a dash mechanic as well. Agents can dash in any direction, receiving a short speed boost, allowing them to avoid touching enemy balls with their face. <laughs> yeah, this video will have a lot of ball jokes. When a player touches a ball that is not active, aka a ball that hit the ground, this player will not get damaged, instead the ball will be picked up and then the agent can throw it, activating it. However, when an active ball hits an enemy player, that player will lose one health point out of the total of 2 HP he's got. And if an agent gets hit twice and his HP reaches zero, well, kaput. I even implemented this awesome ragdoll effect, but I've turned it off during training so it lags a little less. Talking about the devil, to speed up the training, I made 66 agents play in parallel equally spread across 11 different gyms. One round will last from 5 to 10 minutes on average, and as you can see, at the beginning they are utterly lost, drunkenly stumbling around and shooting the balls in random directions. It wasn't too long until on round 3, Andre managed to spank our boy Kabernaut scoring the first hit, and I think it wasn't just randomness, but some sort of personal vendetta. I can't otherwise explain why on next round, Andre was so determined to bonk Kabernaut once again, landing this sick MLG trick shot onto his opponent. By the way, during the training process, most valuable pogo is determined based on number of hits, but in the final results, it will be the number of kills, so keep that in mind. It wasn't too long until the first unalivement took place, when on round 21, first Red Nugget got a taste of Andre's ball, and a few seconds later, Kabernaut got spanked by LND plays. Pogo also got hit by Andre soon after, and eventually got eliminated by LND plays. Unfortunately, I was not able to catch the moment where the first win occurred. Well, I couldn't catch any of the 11 wins Team Red had, but I had a good excuse. I was sleeping. Anyways, when I woke up, I started noticing that the agents are not really learning. Considering the complexity of the task, I decided to stay optimistic and give the agents more time to train. Sadly, after about 50 more hours of training and barely any progress made, it became obvious something is wrong and needs further investigation, which ain't gonna be easy. You see, there are just so many different things that could be at fault when you're dealing with machine learning algorithms. You never know whether it's due to choosing wrong hyperparameters, having a poorly optimized reward function, some values not resetting properly at the beginning of the round, physics not working properly. There is literally no way to tell. Oh, I forgot to assign agent's team. Hmm. Yeah, basically despite being in opposing teams, all of the agents thought that they are teammates. That might have played a small part in their intellectual disability. Anyways, that is fixed now, so let's train from scratch. Yay! Once again at ground zero, our dum-dums will have to touch a lot of balls until they will be able to have a proper fight, but I went to bed feeling optimistic. Once I woke up, I was happy to see some progress, the score being 7-8 in the favor of Team Red. Not only that, but I got to see how both teams managed to secure a victory. First, on round 335, after a quite intense battle, Team Blue successfully eliminated all of their opponents, just to be met by the same fate the round after. I started getting more and more confident that this project will actually work, the agents seemingly were getting smarter, the scores were getting better, everything was going well. Again, it was getting kinda late and needless to say, I was excited to see the results in the morning, and oh boy I was surprised. 
Yeah, our dudes had a collective stroke during the night, resulting in, well, this. Despite it being funny, I was starting to feel pretty frustrated, since I barely had any time left and I was nowhere near having professional ball handlers. Luckily, not only was I able to quickly solve the issue, I even managed to salvage the training progress so I didn't have to start from scratch. But since I had to make some changes, the round number and scores got reset to zero, but the training actually continued for another few thousand rounds. But before I show you the final result, there is something I need to mention. In competitive games, there is a thing called ELO score or ELO rating. This score indicates the relative skill of players in a game, so the bigger this value is, the better the players are against each other. And while training the agents for this dodgeball tournament, after hundreds of hours I still struggled to see any decent advancement in their strategies, at least visually. However, the ELO score kept increasing, which should mean that they are getting better, right? Well, that's what I thought and decided to let them train for as long as the ELO score keeps growing, kinda. By the way, that is also the reason why this video got delayed by a few weeks, but I'm deviating from the point. After another 200 hours of training, running out of time, I wasn't sure if the agents are even learning, so I've settled to stop the current training after a total of more than 3000 rounds and about 300 hours. But don't you worry, right now, while you're watching this video, I'm training these dudes from scratch after making some changes, so I ain't giving up that easily. These bad boys will be coming back. But enough talking, time to see some ball to face action. First we'll have an AI only fight, and afterwards I will join the game as one of the players to see who is better, humans or AI. But first, Pogo together with Red Nugget and Kabernot in Team Red will be competing against Spartan King, Alan Plays, and Andre Spark in Team Blue. First team to get to 5 wins, well, wins. Pause this video right now and let me know who do you think is gonna win, Team Blue or Team Red? The action starts immediately, Kabernot gets a taste of Spartan King's ball, losing one health point right off the bat. Awesome ricochet shot, smacks Red Nugget securing a huge advantage for Team Blue. Kabernot making use of the situation, pays Spartan King back with the same coin, or, well, ball. Spartan King tries to run away, but Red Nugget is seeking for revenge as well. What a shot! Red Nugget has avenged himself securing the first kill of this round and becoming the current most valuable pogo of Team Red. We can now see the game from his point of view, but um, yeah, it's a little bit shaky, so I'll keep this window small in case someone wants to punish himself by getting nauseous. Pogo managed to get close to Andre, picked up the ball that was hitting behind the wall and BOOM! I don't think Andre enjoyed it too much because he made his mission to treat Pogo the same way and after missing few shots and calibrating his aim, Andre accomplished his goal resulting in everyone in Team Red having 1 HP. That being said, Team Red still has all of its players in game and that lasted for quite some time, both teams returning back to their spawn areas and exchanging continuous fires, but no one was getting hit though. That was until someone got hit and what a hit it was. Alan D plays, pick up a ball and with one of the most beautiful ricochets, without even looking smacks the soul out of Pogo's body, sending him to the spirit realm. Now, if you don't want to repeat his fate, better smack the shit out of the like and subscribe button, Pogo is watching you. Alright, fast forward another minute and we see how these two opposing players are rushing towards the same ball and dashing in the last minute LND plays touches the ball first, immediately obliterating Kabernaut, leaving Red Nugget alone against two opponents. Not sure what Andre was doing in the corner, I guess calling to the hunting gods because he got back in the game and boom, one shot, celebratory dance and Team Blue secures first victory. In round 2, nobody was recklessly rushing forward alone, however we got to see something different. Team Red did start pushing forward, but together as a team. It's funny how in response to this, Team Blue also decides to stick together, getting slowly cornered. Call me old school, but I think pushing is better done when facing the direction you are actually pushing. Yep. <laughs> did, did you just see that? Spartan King aiming at Kabernot missed his shot, the ball ricocheted off the wall and while it was falling down Red Nugget just ran into it. <laughs> nice one. 
Team Red is now at a disadvantage, but they haven't lost their spirit. Pogo, hiding behind the wall, is successfully looting his opponents, and the moment they got close, he rushes in, picks up the ball, smacks Python King, who didn't appreciate it, and 180 no scopes Pogo returning the favor. The next few minutes, while packed with action, did not have any impactful moments, but that was until Andre decided it is time. He picks up the ball, does a moonwalk attempt, and boom, dead! What a smooth criminal! <laughs> See what I did there? Meanwhile, LND plays lost one health point to Cabernot, who, despite being stuck in the lion's den, manages not only to survive, but to wreak havoc. Now that it is down to 3 vs 1, Team Blue has nothing better to do than to horse around and flex in front of poor Cabernot. Eventually, Spartan King decides to put him out of his misery, securing second victory for Team Blue. After a celebratory dance, round 3 starts, and oh boy are the players confused. After some friendly fire, Pogo manages to score an impressive hit on LND plays. Spartan King, pretending he didn't just throw a ball at LND, decides to step in for his team, but what a dodge! Pogo and Red Nugget both dodge the ball in the last second. Oof, another close shot from LND, and another one. another one! But Pogo's aim is better and he secures the kill. It's 3 against 2 now. Next few minutes, not much was going on, both teams chilling next to their spawn points, until our brave-hearted boy Pogo pushed right into the enemy lines. Initially, I thought this is going to be a Sudoku mission, but then BOOM! Spartan King did not like it and is seeking revenge. He misses the first shot and the second one. Pretty close though. However, Red Nugget barely misses Spartan King, triggering both players of Team Blue. After annoying them for a little bit more, Andre with a sniper shot spanks Red Nugget, followed by an immediate assist from Spartan King. It's 2v2 now. Let's once again fast forward the boring part where nothing of value happens. I mean, sure, there are still some cool dodges and shots here and there, but I know you only care about ball to face action. Go for it, Cabernot, do the thing. Alright, alright, two red players versus Andre. This might just be the first win for Team Red, but let's not jinx it. Few more minutes of confusion, lots of confusion. I think it is because Andre is behind the wall, so they can't really see him. Anyways, after lots of back and forth, Pogo actually manages to score yet another hit on this round. Then they once again kept hiding from each other, but it seems Cabernot was not taking it all too serious and was just trying to flex all this time. Only that can explain this final impressive, yet unnecessary trick shot. Alright, Team Red actually secured the round. <laughs> nice. Round 4 starts completely different. Tired of being pushed, Team Blue are the ones attacking now. Andre took the initiative, infiltrating enemy lines, while Red Nugget successfully deflects LND's ball with his face. Despite being in such a close proximity to each other, nobody managed to score a single hit for quite some time. That was until Andre once again infiltrated Team Red, picked up the ball right under his enemy's nose and gently bonked Pogo with it. After a successful mission, Andre retreats to the safety of his teammates, but something weird happens. First, Red Nugget gets eliminated by Spartan King and immediately after Pogo is also knocked down. Soon after, Cabernaut loses his first health point to Spartan King. Damn, dude has 1 HP and he is alone against 3 opponents. No wonder he is this scared. Looks like he is trying to stick to the wall and corners so that there are less directions to worry about. Well, that also means less directions to dodge. Eventually, Spartan Kings decides to finish the job and boom. Congratulations to Team Blue for winning with the impressive score of 3 to 1. But can they perform as well against a true professional? After all, I made this game, how hard can it be? Right? Alright, time for the papa to join the game and show this little pricks who's the boss. This is definitely my first try and I have not been demolished about 4 rounds in a row before that. As you can see, I made it so in the main menu you can watch AI fighting AI and if we click play the game starts and you get to control Pogo. Alright, let's touch some balls. <clears throat> Uh, oh, I think I got Spartan King. Let's try to flank them. Oh, f I clicked on my other screen and my game tab closed. F <clears throat> all good, all good. They're just dumb bots. I can beat them easily. I just need to... Nice. All right, no more flanking. I'll use their own strategy and push them instead. I want to land a ricochet shot in this game, but I keep missing simple shots. Fuck. 
I misclicked once again. Oh my god, the cursor is back. Okay, switch off the target. Let the boys deal with Spartan King. I'll focus on Andre. Of course he will hit me with the sick shot. Nice! And it was a ricochet. Don't I deserve a like for this? Right, looks like my dudes took care of Spartan King. Only one target left. I think now surrounding him might be a good idea. Right, I got him. By the way, aiming without a crosshair is actually quite a challenge, but you will be able to try it yourself. Almost. Okay, now. Nice! Dance, boy, dance. Alright, round two, let's go, boys. Oh my god, what the hell? The round just started and these two mad lads already eliminated someone. I gotta go help my boys. If I only could hit anyone. Oof! I almost ran into this one, gotta be more careful. Oh, it's getting a little more stressful. Dodging in close proximity ain't that easy and the f cursor is back. Damn, can't hit him. Where's my team? <laughs> Looks like Red Nugget finished his opponent. Kabernot is chilling at the spawn, lol. Alright, bro, you're surrounded, just give up. Nice one, victory dance. Okay, one more round and I win. I want to try flanking once again and... Misclicked again. Or uh, whatever, we can do this. Just gotta pick up a ball. Ooh, close one. Did you see that? Another ricochet. And another hit. Somebody stop me because I'm too good. Ooh, oh my god, what is this guy doing? Crazy. I hate it when they get scared and hide in the corners. There aren't that many balls around there. And nice. I just need to hit him one more time and the win is mine. Okay, let's end this. I will just get as close as possible to make it easier. Nice. Well, looks like your boy is still better than an AI. But what about you? Think it was easy? Why don't you try it yourself? I have made the game accessible for free on my Patreon page, where you can play against these dum-dums. Huge thanks to the Patreons Kabernot, Spartan King, Red Nugget, Ellen D Plays, and Andre Svark. You are the best. Link to the Patreon page in the description. In the meantime, go check out my other video, where I've trained AI musketeers to survive against hordes of zombies while being blocked on a rooftop and nowhere to run. Bye.